Black stories are very dark and disturbing. They cover topics such as sexual harassment and attempted murder. You have been warned. I'll begin by saying that I've always been unafraid to speak my mind. Even when I am afraid, I just speak up anyway. I'm a girl, and when I was 15, I had a male friend called Mike. Mike was a bit of an oddball, but at the time, I really liked to root for the underdog. I hadn't yet learned the lesson that sometimes the person who presents themselves as an underdog ain't the underdog, and there's a justified reason that people avoid them. The situation is what made me finally learn that lesson. Mike went to my school and we were friends for two years. He was honestly at best friend level, so I had decided to tell him that I had a crush on another girl. I told him that I was pretty sure I was a lesbian. Now I know I am, but I said I was pretty sure instead of certain just because I was trying to accept that myself. Well, Mike was quiet for a bit and then just said, Oh, okay. He asked who the girl was, and I told him everything. He seemed fine with it, and he listened to me. As time passed, though, he started to say really degrading shit about girls, and he expected me to agree with him or something. He'd point to random girls in the hall and say really creepy things. It wasn't like he said, oh, she's cute. He was saying pornographic shit, and you just know when something feels fucked up. I told him not to talk about them like that and he said I should agree with him since I liked girls too. I told him he was a perv and that I wasn't, and then we kind of had a falling out. We would make up, but this just kept happening as the weeks passed. I remember ranting about him to my mom, and she asked why I was friends with him if he pissed me off so much. I realized that she had a point, but he was one of my best friends. I mean, I didn't want to lose him, but he was annoying me. I figured I should talk to him about it. So one day I asked him if he wanted to sit in the library during our lunch hour. He was the only person I'd come out to, and honestly, my other friends sometimes teased me about dating Mike as we had spent a lot of time together. My friends hated him because he was labeled as annoying all throughout the school. The other boys teased him for being goofy, and a lot of the girls just thought he was an idiot because he could be awkward. So we ended up in the library, and it was very quiet. The library lady was in there on her computer and eating, and there were maybe two other kids that were sitting there eating alone. Me and Mike sat in a corner at the back, away from everyone else. We had our lunch with us, and Mike had started eating, but I didn't. I said that we needed to talk, and he then said, Yeah, about what? All with his mouth full of a ham sandwich. I began to explain that I thought he was coming off as sexist and creepy with all the comments he made about random girls. How he would literally tell me like 20 different girls in our school year had blowjob eyes, as well as a bunch of other pornographic shit. I don't want to get into all of it, but think of typical disrespectful shit that a frat dude would say. And that was Mike. Remember, this all came out of seemingly nowhere, right after I told him about my sexual orientation. He continued eating and he said that he couldn't be sexist and that I shouldn't go all feminist on him. This got my hackles up, but I tried to stay cool. I said that his comments were disrespectful, but he just wouldn't listen to me. He said I should agree and that I don't want to say exactly what he said because it makes me really cringe. He basically said that I love female genitals just as much as he does and that I should be okay with him saying what he would say. He just said it in a more crude way, as you can likely imagine. I told him that he wasn't appreciating what I was saying, and he said all he was doing was listening to me. I just got so mad at that point, and I just left him there, and then grabbed my shit and was gone. He tried to chase after me, but I just ignored him and went into the girls' bathroom because it was close by. I didn't want to fight in the library. I had wondered if I was being dramatic, but after talking to one of my female friends, she agreed that he sounded creepy. He just made really creepy comments about girls' bodies, and it was uncomfortable. I was seriously reconsidering my friendship with him, and my female friend said he was a loser and I should drop him. Some time passed, and I didn't really talk to Mike, but he kept trying to talk to me. I literally blanked him like he was a ghost. Childish? Sure. 
but I was 15, so it was to be expected. After like four days, though, I ended up talking to him again. He cornered me in one of our classes, and he seemed apologetic this time. He said to please talk to him and that he was really sorry if he offended me. I decided to accept this. It was progress after all, but I would proceed with caution moving forward. I told myself if he started to disrespect other girls again, that would be it. So two weeks passed, and it was alright. One day we were walking home from school though and we ended up on the topic of my own sexuality. Mike asked me if I knew as a young kid and I spoke to him about things. Well, the conversation started to get creepy. He asked if I'd ever watched lesbian porn and I was taken aback. I felt uncomfortable. I know we were friends, but still. I told him no and I told him it was all fake and it made for pervy men anyway. He was quiet for a bit, and then he asked if I was a boob or an ass girl. I just stared at him like, why would you even ask me that? I then rolled my eyes and brushed him off. He then asked if I was definitely sure that I liked only girls, and shouldn't I at least kiss one boy just to make sure? I was really offended by this, and I raised my voice at him and told him no, that the thought of even holding hands with a boy felt wrong, and that I knew that I didn't want anything to do with them. It's nothing personal, it's just how I am. Mike dropped it, but I felt annoyed and uncomfortable. From that moment on, I had started to distance myself. I decided to come out to my mom, and she was accepting. That was a relief, and it really gave me some confidence. I then told my female best friend, and she was also totally accepting. And she told me that she kind of suspected it because I never seemed to have a crush on any boys. This meant so much to me. And I started to feel like with the support of my other friend and my mom, maybe I didn't need to latch on to Mike. I was starting to feel like he had changed, or at least his true colors were finally revealed. More time went on and Mike knew that I was distancing myself. He became clingier. I know that I should have handled it better, but I was 15 and we all do stupid things at that age. One day Mike and I were talking. He asked me why I was being distant and I was honest. He went quiet and he looked distressed. This was when we were walking home from school again. He waited for me at a certain point and I could walk home with him by going a certain route. He got home before me and my house wasn't much further. I decided that we had to talk so I walked with him. After being quiet, he had told me that he cared about me and that he didn't want to lose me. I said if that's true then he has to stop being so disrespectful. He was quiet again, before then telling me that he wanted me to listen to what he had to say. I said all right, and then waited. He took forever to get it out, but he had basically asked me if I was really sure about myself, because he was developing feelings for me. I don't know what word describes how I felt at that moment. If all shit was a feeling, that was what I felt. We never stopped walking throughout all of this, by the way and now it was my turn to be silent. I didn't know what to say. I felt bad. I mean, it wasn't his fault that he felt that way. It isn't something you can exactly control that much. I just ended up saying sorry and looked at him, and then he just shut his eyes and stopped walking. I felt really awkward and honestly terrible, like guilty almost. Mike? I said as he stood there. He was still quiet and he kind of sucked in his mouth. I don't know how to describe it. It's that weird mouth thing that people do when they're trying not to cry, except his face wasn't contorted or anything. I repeated his name again and he looked up at the sky with his eyes still closed. Then he said, What will it take? And then he said my name at the end of the sentence. I asked what he meant and he then raised his voice and then said, I mean, what will it fucking take? He didn't shout, but it made me take a step back. I struggled to find the words, but I couldn't help myself beginning to feel a little scared. He said that ever since I came out to him, he'd been picturing me with other girls, and it wasn't fair to him because he'd fallen in love with me. He opened his eyes and then stared at me, and then he put his arms outstretched and then shook them around. I was just stood there like, what the fuck is even happening right now? He then started ranting like a maniac. 
It was shouting that I'd never even given a guy a chance and that I should give him a chance because we're young and that I can't possibly write off men when I've never even kissed anyone. This made me so infuriated and despite feeling nervous, I had started yelling at him that he was a prick and to fuck off with all his ignorant bullshit. He shouted over me and started walking towards me and I forced myself to stand firm. I was going to shove him if he got too close. He kept walking. He said that it wasn't fair and why couldn't I just want him back like he wanted me. He just kept going on about how it wasn't fair. I remember shouting back that life isn't fair and he told me to shut up and listen to him. I shouted back and he started stomping his feet. He told me that humans aren't that different from one another and I should just give him a chance. Honestly, I'm putting off typing all of what he said next because it just makes me so upset. But he had started to say that he had all the parts a girl has and I should be able to be with him because I cared about him as a friend. He said that we could make it work because when you kiss someone you shut your eyes and we could have sex and just picture he was a girl. He said that lesbians use strap on toys so I should just pretend his penis is a strap on and it would be the same thing as banging with a toy. He said the same shit about his hands and mouth, basically saying his hands aren't any different to a girl's, and that he'd go down on me all the time since that's what lesbians do all the time. I was so disgusted and appalled that I wanted to punch him in the face. He kept repeating to give him a chance, begging me even. He said that I could grow to love him, and that's when I shouted that we weren't in Beauty and the Beast and our friendship was over. I told him that I'd never like him or any guy and to fuck off. I turned to walk away but I kept looking over my shoulder. I told him to leave me the fuck alone and to never speak to me again. He started following me though and continued his tirade. He told me that he couldn't live without me and that he needed me so badly. I told him he was a psycho and I started to run. I could hear his footsteps behind me as he chased me. I was freaking out so bad. I knew that I had to run away from him. Mike had lost his damn mind. When I got into a more populated area, I began screaming fire. I'd always been taught to scream that word to alert attention. Mike had started shouting at me telling me to stop, but I just kept going. Someone came out of the car up ahead and I screamed at them to help me. I then sprinted to them as fast as humanly possible and it was a woman and a younger boy. I recognized them as a boy from my school and his mom immediately sprang into action. I literally ran into her and started babbling trying to tell her all about Mike. She had saw Mike chasing after me, but he had turned around once he realized he was caught. The woman's son just stood there looking concerned and confused. We didn't know each other super well, but we recognized each other. His mom offered to drive me to my house and I asked if I wanted the police called. I said no to the police, but yes to a car ride. She took me home and she actually stayed with me while I spoke to my parents. Her son just kept smiling at me comfortingly in the car and I really appreciated that. My parents were horrified to hear what went down and they immediately called Mike's house as I had his house phone number. No one picked up. Shocker. My dad wanted to go to Mike's house and knock the door down and so did my mom and big brother but they had managed to somehow restrain themselves. So the next day my parents marched into school and we headed straight into the head office. I told the head what happened and my mom was demanding something to be done. She wanted Mike expelled for homophobic harassment, bullying, attempted physical assault, everything. He hadn't hit me, but my parents were convinced that that's why he was chasing me. Combined with his fucked up ranting, it was just a feeling they had. Mike wasn't in school that day and the head teacher was keen to handle it all internally, but my parents were having none of it. They made sure the head teacher called Mike's parents on their mobile phones. His dad answered. It was a whole whirlwind of shouting. His dad came to the school and the head spoke to him. He tried defending his son, but my parents ripped him apart. I didn't attend classes that day. They took me straight home and honestly, it's all kind of a blur. I just remember constant arguing. The head telling us that he'd speak to Mike, my parents insisting that he'd be charged and expelled, and then them calling the head a homophobe and a coward. It was a nightmare. Everyone in the school found out what happened and I felt really embarrassed. 
It was also hard because now everyone knew some very private information about me. It was hard. Thankfully, no one was really horrible about it. At least not to my face. But I guess someone somewhere must have been bothered. That's just life. The next day, my parents and I went back to the head teachers for a meeting in his office. It was really tense in the year, but I didn't think that was unexpected. He sat us down, and what he said still gives me chills. He said that Mike's dad agreed to have a word with them, which we already knew. Well, Mike wasn't in the house when his dad got back, and he ended up going through some stuff in Mike's room. He found three notebooks filled to the brim with obscene drawings depicting women with injuries on them. He had drawn himself inflicting injuries to these women as well. He had also written a bunch of really disturbing things. He had a list of girls in our year ranking them based on specific body parts. He dedicated several pages to discussing how sexy each girl was and also listing his favorites. His favorite would change, but over time my name was at the top of the list. He ranked my body parts too, and it made me feel disgusting. He'd written about how he wanted to commit crimes against the girls in the school, including me. It really crushed me to discover all this. Mike's dad had contacted a police friend, and together they went out searching for Mike. They had actually found him riding his bike in the woods. He didn't try to run away from them. Mike's dad's police friend said something had to be done about this, and Mike's dad agreed. He changed his tune totally. The head told us that Mike was in serious trouble. The police also wanted to talk to me as well as all the other girls in his book. I was numb. Mike had been my friend, yet I hadn't known him at all. He was one of my best friends, yet I never truly knew him. If I hadn't come out to him, if he'd been best friends with a straight girl instead of me, would this have all come out? How did he hide it? Why did I trigger him to unleash his craziness? I'll never truly know. Mike ended up being sent away to some sort of psychiatric hospital, and I never saw him again. Everyone was shook from this. The girls all whispered that they were right. He really was a weirdo. The boys said he was a lunatic and that they were all glad he was gone. I agreed with both sentiments, but I'd been his friend. Even now, it sounds like it isn't true. I've never spoken to Mike since. I've never seen him again. I don't want to, and I really do hope I never meet him again. This whole situation taught me that you don't always know people the way that you think you do. People can hide a bunch of awful shit from others, and you'll never know what is in someone else's brain. It's a really scary world out there sometimes, and I learned that sometimes people bring being labeled as weird upon themselves. Sometimes people are messed up and others pick up on it. I'm just glad Mike is out of my life, and I hope he never gets a chance to hurt any innocent girls. This happened to me when I was 21. I had decided to leave my apartment to go for a late night walk. I was walking about a mile into town when I came across this random Asian woman. She looked to be in her early 40s, and she was dressed entirely like a geisha. She approached me, and she had started asking me something in Japanese, since she's Japanese, by the way. I know Japanese kind of well, so I understood about half of what she was saying. Some of it translated to, Why are you walking alone? Keep in mind, she also seems to know English kind of well, as it translated when she was talking in Japanese. So I told her that I was just getting some exercise, and then she said something afterwards that made my blood run cold. She said what translated to, there's danger lurking around you, beware. I didn't know what she meant by this at first, so I had turned around at the next block, but the woman was following me, and she had with her who I assumed to be her sister. She introduced her to me, and I said konnichiwa which is Japanese for hello. Her sister was dressed entirely like a geisha as well. I didn't think too much of it, but I continued my walking, and they were behind me the entire time. They were both repeatedly chanting something really creepy in Japanese. They were chanting to what I recognized to be English for beware, 
danger is lurking. I felt uncomfortable, so I had started speed walking. Then they chanted something else to which I recognized to be, you're gonna die. Like I said, I know Japanese pretty well, so I knew what they were saying. I freaked out, so I full on ran for my life. I ran all the way back to my apartment. I was out of breath when I got home, and about 15 minutes later I had heard a knock at my door. It was 2 a.m. at this point. I looked out the window, and those same two geisha women were staring directly at me. They were both holding those handheld Japanese fans to their mouths. Then they opened my door and walked in. I guess they saw me run to my apartment and got my apartment number. I was so freaked out that I would forgot to lock the door when I got home. Then they approached me and one of them pinned me to the wall. Then the other one took out a knife and gently caressed it against my face. Then the geisha with the knife said in Japanese, which also translated to, nice handsome face. I'll add some touches if you don't mind. I was about to scream. But then the geisha that pinned me to the wall put her hand over my mouth. Then she actually said something in English this time. She told me if I made another sound that her sister would slit my throat. She then told me to shake my head yes or no for anything they would tell or ask me. I was really fucking scared at this point. Like to the point where I started to cry. Then the geisha with the knife came up to me again. She then pulled my pants down. But thankfully I kept on my underwear. I was frozen. I didn't know what to do. She then took her knife and then cut into my outer thigh. It felt like she had gone in about an inch and it hurt so fucking bad. I was just squeezing my eyes shut breathing through my nose since I didn't want to make a single sound that would upset them. Then the geisha that pinned me to the wall told me in English that if I told the police they would then return and then cut my throat. She asked if I understood. I shook my head yes and they then both finally left my apartment. About 10 minutes later, I looked out my window again, and they were both completely gone now. I was able to call 911. They arrived five minutes later, and I explained everything that happened to the police and paramedics, and I then showed them the cut mark on my thigh. The paramedics strapped me to the gurney and then took me to the ambulance. When we got to the hospital, the doctor and nurse examined the cut, and I needed stitches. I had actually asked the hospital staff if I could stay the night there just for my own safety, and since I was scared shitless to go back to my apartment and feared that they might come back. They said it was okay, so I'd spend the night in the hospital. The next day, the police drove me home. I haven't seen those two women again after that night, but I now have severe PTSD from that experience. Dear God, it was one of the scariest things that have ever happened to me. This incident occurred towards the end of 2023. I was at my best friend's house for dinner and her boyfriend was at work. My friend lives in a block of flats and the neighbor directly across from her is a drug addict. Now he is harmless but he had brought some real drama with him. For like two months leading up to this night I'm about to explain, my friend would hear men outside her door screaming and trying to kick her neighbor's door in. My friend is very vocal and always the one to defend people. Despite being a young woman, she always opened her door and told these guys to go away and called the police, etc. She would always call me and tell me about these incidents or we'd text about them. It was always four men and they looked dirty and also seemed like addicts. I don't mean to shame addicts, but these dudes were all very dodgy individuals. They would sometimes tell my friend to mind her business but she just stood her ground and would always tell them to leave the neighbor alone and that she was calling the police. Fast forward to the night that I was there for food. We had just sat down to eat and I honestly didn't hear anything, but my friend put her plate down and she told me that she heard noise outside in the landing. I said that I didn't hear anything myself, but my friend knew that she'd heard something and then she went to her front door. I had heard her open it and I heard her loudly saying, what do you guys think you're doing? I put my plate down and then hovered. I positioned myself so I wasn't visible, but that I was close enough to the front door to hear. I couldn't really make out what the guys were saying because they sounded incoherent, 
but they must have been saying something. I heard my friend then say, That's it. I'm phoning the fucking police right now. There were then shouts, and I later realized that the men had run away. I had heard my friend talking to her neighbor, and I could hear her ask if he was sure he was alright. She said that she'd phone the police to talk to him, and he just kept saying, Nah, Hen, it ain't necessary. Now, Hen is a term similar to calling a stranger sweetheart or something in my own country. I was just standing there like, Huh? What's going on? Long story short, my friend came back and went to her living room, and she said she had to call her boyfriend. I asked what was going on, and she just explained that those dodgy-ass dudes were back. The neighbor had opened his door, and he was now surrounded by them and had been crouching, like in the squat position with his hands covering his face, almost cowering away, I guess. My friend said that she didn't see a weapon, but the neighbor claimed they had been threatening to stab him, and apparently one had attempted to stab him with a skinny knife. It wasn't like a huge machete, but it was a sharp one, apparently. That was why my friend had said she was calling the police so ardently. The neighbor had said they tried to stab him. The guys then bolted off instantly. My friend called her boyfriend and he was getting stressed out, telling her she should stay out of it because he doesn't want her getting hurt, etc. I understood that, but my friend was really frustrated by this because she just likes to help people and she always stands up to anyone. My friend had also told me that the guys had told her, you're a fucking grass of a neighbor, which apparently is a slang term for snitch in my country. This was really nerve-wracking to be standing there knowing these really dodgy guys were there and about to stab that guy. Me and my friend are also female, so I really couldn't help but feel a little vulnerable with four crazy guys outside. My friend ended up calling the police, but she had called a non-emergency line. They spoke to her for a long time, and they said they'd contact the neighbor. The neighbor ended up going on the run, and people were really worried that he was dead or something. The police even woke up my friend at like 11 at night, knocking her door to ask if she'd seen him. The guy's girlfriend was also knocking on his door a lot. My friend kept hearing someone knock, and she realized after looking through the people that it was the same woman multiple times. My friend then decided to ask who she was, and they got to talking. The neighbor ended up coming back after disappearing for like a month. My friend and I even saw the dodgy guys in town while the neighbor was gone. So far, they've actually been leaving him alone. Apparently, he owed them money or something. He's been laying really low ever since, but he is back now. I'm just glad my friend was never hurt by those crazy guys. But I really admire her bravery just to stand up to them. She really was brave for that. Hey everyone, that's about it for today's stories. If you have your own story that you would like to send, you can send it in at southerncannibal.com or you can email it at southerncannibalstories at gmail.com. I look forward to telling your story. Have a good night or good day everyone. And remember, to always.